Welcome back. And a, a Fox News alert. The Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority resigning. Yep, setting up for a new government in the West Bank as war against America's greatest ally in the Mideast, Israel, still rages. Now, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu joins us live from Jerusalem with an update. I guess the breaking news is this. The cabinet, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, thanks for joining us, has agreed to offer their resignation, but Mahmoud Abbas hasn't agreed to accept it. If they do resign, does that pave the way for an acceptable two-state solution? No. Well, first of all, I think that's musical chairs. They haven't had an election in the Palestinian Authority for 17 years, so they're just shuffling chairs. Uh, but the real thing we want to see is genuine de-radicalization. They have to stop teaching their children to become terrorists. They have to stop paying terrorists based on the amount of Jews they kill. They have to stop teaching and indoctrinating a whole generation on the annihilation of Israel. That's real reform. That so far has not happened. I hope it does happen, but so far it hasn't happened. To the as far as the Palestinian state ahead. is concerned. Yes, go ahead. Do the Palestinians well, look, want a two-state uh, solution, Mr. Prime Minister? Well, unfortunately, I think that what they want is a, is a one-state solution. They don't want a state next to Israel. They want a state uh, instead of Israel. And that's why uh, I brought a resolution to the Knesset, our parliament, last week. And 99 out of 120, it's actually 99 to 9, because the rest abstained, voted against the attempt to impose on Israel a Palestinian state. Now, why did they do that? Because we've just had a Palestinian state, a de facto state. Hamas in Gaza had a de facto Palestinian state. And what did they do with it, Brian? They used it to rape women, behead them, burn babies alive, murder children in front of their parents and parents in front of their children, took hostages. That's the equivalent of 29 11s in one day, like 50,000 Americans butchered and 10,000 held hostage, including mothers and children, babies. That's, that's what this state produced. So naturally, you understand there's overwhelming support for my position. It's not an outlier position. It's not a fringe position. The people of Israel are united as never before in saying that what right. we will not accept is a Palestinian state that will endanger Israel. That's rewarding terrorism. This will set a Guinness World of, uh, uh, Book of Records on rewarding terrorists right. after they committed the most atrocious savagery against the Jewish people since the Holocaust. So I want you to hear what Governor Newsom said about your reluctance with this two-state solution on everything you just outlined. Listen. With regard to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, who I've visited and I've worked with in the past, he's doubling down on stupid as it relates to the two-state solution and walking away from that. Let's work to get these hostages home, to work to eliminate Hamas and rebuild Gaza and advance a two-state solution. Are you doubling down on stupid? Well, look, I, I met uh, the governor when he was here, uh, and I hope he had a chance to tour the country because then he would have seen that... Uh, this is not my personal position. It's the position of the people of Israel. They're not stupid. They understand that to just offer a Palestinian state is to give a platform for the uh, uh, repeated attempts to uh, annihilate the Jewish state. And Hamas has already promised that if it has, if it's reconstituted, if it, it, Israel doesn't win the war, then they'll do this October 7th massacre over and over and over again, their words. So I don't think the people of Israel are stupid. I think they're actually very smart. That's why they support my position in achieving total victory, mm. uh, defeating Hamas, bringing back the hostages, and making sure that right. Gaza doesn't pose a threat to Israel again. And that means that Israel will have to have the overriding security control over that territory for the foreseeable future. That doesn't come with uh, unlimited uh, Palestinian sovereignty. I think, I think right. the people are smart. Does the President Biden that hugged you after October 7th resemble the same one that seems upset with you now, saying your reaction in Gaza has been over the top? What's your reaction to the seemingly withering support from this administration? Look, I appreciate the president's support uh, at the beginning of the war and uh, throughout. Uh, we've had our differences of opinion, but we've uh, been able to agree on, uh, the, you know, on the three war aims, destroying Hamas, bringing back the hostages, uh, and uh, making sure that Gaza is not a threat to Israel. But I think that there are natural differences of opinion. I can tell you one thing, though. You know, I just came out of a meeting with Colonel John Spencer. John Spencer is the world expert on urban warfare. He heads the urban warfare department in West Point. Uh, and he's compared what Israel is doing 
uh, in trying to fight these terrorists right. who not only systematically target ter uh, civilians, but hide behind their right. civilians. He said that there is no other army that is in the world that has gone to the lengths that Israel has gone to Understood. to prevent civilian casualties. Uh, and, and he's right. Uh, so I don't think our reaction is right. over the top. I think the Israeli army is setting the gold standard of how to fight terrorists embedded in civilian neighborhoods, in hospitals, in schools, and yet minimize the, uh, the ratio right. of uh, civilian casualties. And I'll tell you, Every civilian casualty is a tragedy, and they're all, they should all be brought right. to the uh, doorstep of Hamas that is using them as human shields. I want you to hear what Jake Sullivan just warned you guys about. He knows you're going to go into Rafa. He warns you, you better not go in without a plan to get the civilians out. Listen. Talking about more than a million people who have been pushed into this small space in Gaza because of military operations elsewhere. It's also the area where all of the humanitarian assistance comes into Gaza to serve all of Gaza. And so we've been clear that we do not believe that an operation, a mil major military operation, should proceed in Rafah unless there is a clear and executable plan to protect those civilians, to get them to safety, and to feed, clothe, and house them. And we have not seen a plan like that. Have you heard this plan since he said that yesterday? And have the Americans been briefed on your plan? Well, actually, uh, last night I had a meeting with the general staff and the security cabinet, and the, the Army showed us the plan, a double plan, one for the evacuation and humanitarian assistance of the civilian population in Rafah, uh, and second, the elimination of the remaining uh, quarter, roughly, of the uh, 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 Hamas terrorist battalions that are in Rafah. We wouldn't, we can't leave them uh, there because that's like leaving uh, a quarter of ISIS in place in a defined territory. You wouldn't do that, and in fact, you didn't do it. So uh, we're not going to do that either. But we do have a combined plan of evacuating civilians out of harm's way uh, and uh, destroying those battalions. I can tell you that Hamas will be doing everything in their power to make sure that we don't evacuate right. the civilians because they actually try to stop them at gunpoint and often at gunfire. But that's not going to stop us. We won't give them immunity. We'll get the population out. We'll continue the job to achieve total victory. Total victory is how you win the war, and total right. victory is how you win the peace. You can't win the peace if you don't win the war. I know you've taken out 18 of 24 Hamas battalions, but they said you've only taken out 30 percent of Hamas higher-ups. Many are hiding in the tunnels uh, below. If America tells you, don't go into Rafa, will you go in anyway? Well, we'll go in. We make our own decisions, obviously, but we'll go in based on the idea of having also the evacuation of the civilians. By the way, the, the, I agree with the U.S. on this. I don't have a, a, a different position because our strategy right now it has always been, from the beginning, to try to get civilians out of harm's way, and we've been largely successful. The ratio of civilians to combatants killed in uh, Gaza uh, is now down below one to one, which is just unheard of in this kind of crowded urban warfare. Right. But again, we'll do our best to get as many of them out. They'll have the opportunity to leave. That's right. not an American uh, position. That's my position. I understand, too, that one of the big stories and that everyone cares most about, especially the Americans, no offense, are the hostages. You have over 130 uh, on behind enemy lines. What could you tell us about those talks in Qatar? The word is, according to U.S. officials, the basic contours of a deal uh, are agreed upon. Would you describe it the same way? Well, I hope so. I think, I think we're there. I'm not sure Hamas is there. They have what I'd call outlandish demands that's like in another orbit, another planet. They have to come down to reality. Uh, uh, and I think that if that's the case, we'll, we'll be able to have a deal. We certainly want it. I want it. Uh, look, we've already been able to free uh, half the hostages, uh, which is uh, a singular achievement, but we want the remainder, too. And I've devoted my life, ever since I was a young uh, commander uh, in, a, in a special unit, I myself was wounded. Right in an attempt to release uh, the hostages from a hijacked uh, Sabina aircraft. My brother, uh, my older brother, was killed at the rate of, while leading the storming party, at the raid of Antebi, which right. released 103 uh, Jewish hostages. Uh, and we're totally committed. We just had a, a heroic operation in which we released two hostages. We just took them right. out of the jaws of the terrorists. So, obviously, we want this uh, deal, if we can have it. Uh, it depends on Hamas. It's really now their decision, because I think uh, I think the ground has been laid 
but they have to enter right. the they have to enter the ballpark. They're not they're not in town yet. Only 30 seconds left. I understand uh, the efforts have been stepped up against Hezbollah in the north. Do you believe war with Hezbollah is inevitable or closer now than it was before Hamas's attack on October 7th? Hezbollah attacked us on October 8th, the day after the Hamas massacre, uh, and we've ex been exchanging blows ever since. Uh, our goal is to bring back 100,000 people who left the border with uh, Lebanon, with Hezbollah, uh, Israelis, who want to go back right. to their homes. If this can be achieved uh, diplomatically, fine. If not, it'll be achieved militarily. My preference is to achieve it diplomatically, but I can't tell you that. Uh, that uh, Hezbollah right. will cooperate. In any case, we'll get these people back to their homes. And we hope to have you back here and talking about when all the hostages are back. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.